morning. Welcome to worship. Would you stand with us and sing our opening praise this morning? We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. And we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Come on. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Lord, we shout out your praise. may be seated. Well, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. And all I can say is, at least it's not snow. Right? <laughs> yes. Amen. So as you, uh, today, I would like to, number one, welcome you to Christ Venice Methodist Church today. If you're with us online, we appreciate you being with us. You know, we are a church that experiences God through His Word, through our service, and through fellowship with one another in a welcoming community. So we're so glad you chose to worship with us today and pray that God would be with us. A couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, February the 14th, which is Valentine's Day, uh, is Ash Wednesday. And so we're going to be having an Ash Wednesday service on Wednesday evening at 5 p.m. That's going to be in, in the time slot of our, our, our Bible study. And then after that, we're having a special Valentine's Day dinner for a dollar. So dinner is a dollar, um, and we need to have, you need to buy a ticket in the back if you'd like to come to the dinner. This is a nice idea to invite people to come with you, friends to come with you to dinner, but we do need you to have a ticket so we can have an accurate count number, and uh, we're looking forward to that Valentine's dinner. Now, if you look at the, the word Valentine... It has the word Lent in it, L-E-N-T. So what a great way to kick off our Valentine's Day. Um, the second thing is our Mission Festival is coming up very soon in two Sundays. 
there are two events that, that are near and dear to our stomachs. One is the barbecue on, on Sunday, the 18th. Uh, Pastor Bob tells me you do need a ticket, right? Okay. Great barbecue. Great barbecue. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm sure you all will, so please get a ticket for that. And then we have our mission banquet that is also by ticket only, so please, please. So they're in the back and just visit, but the missions festival is just going to be an amazing time to hear about our missionaries on, in the U.S. and on internationally and the work that they do. And I'm so grateful for the, the support that this church gives to our missions. So let's do this. Let us stand, greet one another, and let us remain standing for our praise and worship. Let's continue to lift our voices in worship this morning. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. Have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. You've been faithful through ever. Faithful forevermore, you have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen, you will do great things, God, you do great things. You conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Come on, church, let's lift every voice this morning. Hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, And break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things, oh God. Do great things. Bob, 
Father God, we celebrate today and lift your name in praise for the great things that you have done and the great things that you are doing and the great things that you will do. Lord God, send your Holy Spirit to be with us this morning, filling us up, giving us ears to hear your wisdom through the message, through the scripture, Lord, and, and through, um, through our prayers to you. Lord, give us, give us hearts that are open uh, to hear from you this morning as we continue to, to ask you to make us more like you. Lord, change, change, our, change our minds to desire the things that you desire. And give us hearts that want to be more like you and less like ourselves. You created us to be better. So, Lord, as we, as we lift our voices in praise to you this morning, um, hear our prayers. We love you and we lift them up in the name of Jesus. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols and give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands and give us your hearts let us not lift our souls to another we bow our hearts we bend our knees oh spirit come make us humble we turn our eyes from evil things oh lord we cast down our idols and give us clean hands and give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to another and give us clean hands and give us pure Give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another and give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. We bow our hearts, we bend.
bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. Let us remain standing. If your child comes to you and says, Mom, Dad, what is it that your faith that you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Kids would come forward. All right. Come on up. Come on up. Let's do this. All right. All right. Excellent. 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 How are you doing this morning? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Today, I want you to come up and look at the altar. And we added a new thing. So our first week, we had our hearts. And then we had our minds. And then we had our voices. And what's the new one? The hands. The hands. Do you want to touch those? Are they real? No, they're not real. Okay. Like, isn't that cool? I, I said to one of the kids this week, I said, uh, this reminds me of Thing. And they're like, Thing? Remember the Adams family? Yeah, yeah. Nah. Anyhow, now Pastor John is going to get in trouble because the hands won't stay up. All right. So today we're going to be talking about Jesus resetting our hands. Have you ever had to carry a lot of things and you're like, I, I don't have room in my hands. Have you ever said that? You know, so uh, sometimes when I get out of the, from going to the grocery store, you know, and you're carrying all the things, I don't like to make trips in and out of the house. So I'll try to overload my hands. And what can happen if you overload your hands? Yes. You can fall. You can fall. Mm -hmm. What else? The eggs can get broken. The eggs can get broken. That's happened. <laughs> yes. Anybody else that could, with, with your hands, what, like what, what can happen if you overload your hands? Well, I'm going to be talking to the adults today about using our hands to doing God's work. Okay. So here's my question to you. What would we do if Pastor John said, I need one person to move this table? Could you think one person could do it? No? Yeah. All right, could you do it? No, let's not try. All right. All right. So I'm going to show you something. Here's the one thing about using your hands for God is when we come together, I want everybody to put your hands out like this. Okay, let's go this now, this way. All right. Now, if we all, in the church, when we use our two hands for the hands of God, let's look at how much we can do. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you think with eight hands we could move that altar? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So today I want you to remember that we have our hands and our hands have to do the work of God in the world. And, and if we can't do it ourselves, that's why we have a church. That's why we have a church family to do God's work. All right, well, repeat after me. Let's say a prayer. Say, dear God, dear God thank you for your love thank you for your and your care. And your care. Bless my family. Bless Bless my, Bless my friends. Bless my church. Bless my church. Amen. Amen. Oreo time, anybody? Yes, yes. All right, all right, all right. Could you do the, Could you bring one to Pastor Bob? Because he's coming to get it anyway, so. Joy giving hands. Thank you. Thank you for the treat. Let's go before the Lord in prayer, shall we? Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, focus on His goodness. Amen. 
Heavenly Father, we as a body of Christ in this sanctuary and watching online, Lord, we, we come before you. And in the words of Isaiah, woe to us, for we are a sinful people. But you, you, you have already had a plan for Christ's righteousness to cover us, to make us presentable to you, that we may come boldly into your throne room, that we can come with all of our, our hearts, our, our desires, our, our needs, because you are the creator, you are the, the provider of all there is. And Lord, we, we come and we acknowledge that we, we have not walked in your path this week. We acknowledge that, that we have sat upon the throne that is rightly yours, making decisions that we should give to you. Lord, it just ask to remind each of us again of your great love for us and the grace and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. And to remind each of us that no matter what, in the name of Jesus, your sins, my sins, are forgiven. Thank you, Lord, that we are no longer bonded by our sins. Lord, we... Each one of us has come in this morning carrying something with us, a, a joy, a happiness, good news, the, the, the joy of flying in a plane and enjoying your creation, the joy of young children, the joy of a beautiful day. And we also come bringing burdens. There are many who need healing. Fall upon them, Lord. Allow, allow your, your healing hand to fall upon them in such a way that they can feel your presence, that they can experience you there. And remind each that they are not alone, whether they're in a hospital or rehab or recovering at home, you are always there and that nothing can separate them from your great love through Jesus Christ, nothing. And Lord, we pray for those who grieve, those who have lost loved ones. Lord, thank you for receiving them into your presence. Lord, thank you for, for giving us hope of eternal life that we would once again be rejoined with our loved ones in the time to come where life is without death. And Father, we, we ask for peace in this land. We ask for peace around the world. Uh, we don't know how. There are lots trying to tell us how. But for us, we just want everyone and every knee to bow, every tongue con to confess that Jesus is Lord and that to bring peace around this world. And it begins with us. It begins with us. Help us be ambassadors of your greatness in our lives and around this world. And as followers, we share in one voice the very prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let us continue in our worship as we invite the ushers forward to receive our tithes and our offerings this morning. And may the God of all things 
receive it, bless it, and multiply it for the name of Jesus in our hearts, in our homes, and around this world. Amen.
Our scripture today is from Luke chapter 5, verses 17 to 26. One day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good to spend some time in quiet and as we begin today's service and worship. And once again, if you're with us online, thank you for being here. Friends, today is our last uh, sermon in the series of our reset. We've been talking about the way that Jesus can reset our lives and and put us on a course that, that, that maybe we veered off of or a course that we need to go to that we never really have imagined And so where we've been, we've been talking about, first of all, Jesus resetting our hearts, resetting our faith so that they're centered on Him and and the beauty that He brings to ourselves and our souls. And then we talked about Jesus resetting our minds, that, that, that our thoughts can always go to what would be giving Him glory to the things that He would have us think about. And then we talked last week about our voices that, that everything that comes out of our mouths would be honoring God and giving Him glory. And today, then we turn to our hands. Now, um, the work that God has put us to task in. On our altar here tonight, uh, Amy did a great job with this. And so you can see that we have uh, one of our quilts that our quilt ministry has here and in our prayer shawl ministry here. And we've got our journeymen in our church here that do work with their hands. These are all ways that God works through our hands in ministry to reach people. And so, um, you know, I just wanted to highlight those things because I believe that God is calling us today to examine our hands and, and to kind of say, have my hands been idle? And Lord, which way would you have me go to put my hands in your service? Now, it's been a fun series, this Reset series. I've gotten several emails in this past week about people telling me their Reset stories. And uh, uh, so today, 
they asked me, do you have one more? Well, I have a reset of the hands story that I want to share with you today. So, you know, after church, we're driving home and I was getting to uh, about a mile away from my house. And on the dashboard of my car, this happens. Anyone recognize that sign? Yeah. So, you know what? In Ohio, this time of year, you go in your car, you expect it to be on because it's cold, right? So it's like, and, and, and so the reset, that tire pressure light is there. But in Florida, I mean, it's not cold here. You think this is cold? So I'm like, what? Something really is wrong here. And, and I got to really figure this out because if my tire pressure light went on, there's got to be something wrong. Well, remember what we talked about going back to the source, going back to the Bible for our things of our faith. Well, I thought, how do you figure this out? Well, you go and you look for your car manual. And where's that usually at? Glove box. Go in the glove box. There's no car manual. It's a newer car. You know what you get now? You get a flash drive. Okay? It's all on the flash drive. So you get the flash drive, and I go, well, I don't have my computer in the car. How do I supposed to do that with the flash drive? Well, we have a USB port. You put it in. came up on my, my, my little screen and, and uh, told me what I was supposed to do. So, you know, what, first thing it says, you, you have to figure out how much pressure your tires need. How do you do that? Well, you get down on the door and there's a label there and you read it and it tells you how many pounds of pressure. Okay? So I get out the door, I look down, I go, I can't see it. And my wife says, where's your glasses? I go, I don't have my glasses. I don't wear my glasses. She goes, that's the problem. Okay. So I, I see the pounds that it needs, and so, you know, we, we, we get that taken care of and go to the, the, the 7-Eleven. You know, back in the days when someone would come out and wait on you and pour gas into your car and put time, you're, you're on your own, okay? You're on your own. So anyway, after the whole thing's done with, I have to reset that tire pressure light, which means you've got to go back and figure out how you do. You press and hold this while you do this, while you do this, while you, okay? You see what I'm saying? So anyway... But, but, but my hands had to go back to the source, that manual, for God, for, for, for myself to understand how to reset that tire pressure light. Well, same, same thing is with our faith. You know, when we began this series, I said, remember, to reset something is to restore it to its original design. And, and I believe that the purpose of this reset series was to get us back to what God designed us to do. And he gave us this beautiful world to be in relationship with one another, to, to enjoy, to rest. And he even gave us jobs to do. You see, because when we think about a reset personality now, our faith informs our thoughts. Our thoughts are going to inform our words, and our words are going to inform our actions. So, when we do this, we give glory to God. And, and, and there's probably the, the story that in the Bible that jumped out at me the most this week was the story of uh, Jesus healing the paralyzed man that we heard about in our scriptures today. So let me set this up for you. This, this comes in, in the book of Luke. It's also in the book of Mark. In the book of Mark, we find out that there was actually four men that, that did this. And, and so we're told that that, that they, they, Jesus is in town, he's preaching, and, and the Pharisees are there, and everybody's listening to him. He could have been in a house, could have been in a little bit bigger of a building. We don't know exactly, but he's preaching. And one of the things he's talking about is the forgiveness of sins. And we're told that, that the Pharisees are there, and they're just sitting back looking at him. And notice what's happening to their hands, you know. And, and, and so... They hear him, and, and, and all of a sudden they see this, this, this thing happen where the, the roof starts to open up. And, and then in the midst of this, this crowded room, this man is hoisted down who's paralyzed on a cot. And, and there was no way to get him in except going on the roof. And I, I wonder what, what type of physical energy it took those men to get up there, not to hoist him up there, not only to take the roof apart, but then, then to hoist them down. And, and so there's this hole for the, for the roof, and then we're told that Jesus heals this man. 
And he first starts by saying, your sins are forgiven. And then we tell he heals him and he tells him, get up, take your cot and walk out of here. Walk out of here. You know, Jesus did this powerful, powerful healing in front of all these people. And what did the Pharisees do? They just stood around like this with their hands tied like that. And they didn't quite get it. That what an amazing thing that, number one, that, that Jesus had the power to forgive people's sins while the Pharisees could keep people's sins bound up and those of their own. But also that Jesus had the power to, to, to set people free. And, and so what amazed me about this was the passion of those men to use their hands to get people to Jesus. You know, they pushed against fear. They pushed against regulations. They pushed against conformism. They pushed against insecurity because they realized that there's no other solution that can address the problems of people face but getting them to Jesus. He alone is the answer. What, a, what an amazing story that, that we have highlighted to us. And so I wonder sometimes as the church, have we kind of gotten to a point where we're doing the same things? We've just got our hands crossed and we're just watching. And, and, and we find that, 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 that really God, if you're going to be on fire for Jesus, if you're going to be on fire for the Lord, He's going to put your hands into service. And that's something that, 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 that we cannot take lightly. And we have to find what that service is. You know, when I was about 17, 16, 17 years old uh, in high school, I very, very seriously felt like I might have, have a calling to the Roman Catholic priesthood. Okay? And in an Italian family, six kids, usually one kid became a priest and one kid if it was a female, became a nun. And my sister, who was seven years older than me, she entered the convent and became a nun. And so I, I just felt this calling like that, that I was supposed to be a priest. And then I turned 18 and I had my first girlfriend and I realized that wasn't happening. <laughs> okay. Just being honest. But, but, but I got to tell you, one of the things that, that, that at 16 that I was discerning was what it would be like to, to enter a religious life. And, and so one of the things they did at that time is they took you to visit a seminary. As, you know, in the Catholic seminary, it was a place that you lived, and you could go in high school in those days if you wanted to, and you were trained and l learned to be, to be a priest. And I'll never forget walking in the, the, the seminary at uh, St. Charles Borromeo in, in PA, and, and there was this, this huge cross of Jesus Christ. Now, in, in the Catholic tradition, when you see a cross, the, the, the body of Jesus is on it, the, the nails in his feet and his hands, it's, 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 it looks like that. But this particular cross had no hands and had no feet. You see, that seminary had had a, a major fire that had wrecked that. And so when they restored the chapel, they, they put that cross back. And on top of that cross were these words, you are now my hands and my feet. See, folks, that stayed with me all these years, that, 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 that living a life for Jesus, some of us are going to be in the ministry, pastors, things like that, but we're all called to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Through what God has, has called us to do, maybe through the work, that, through the things that we've studied. And so I believe that, that having a reset hands is living what we call a Jesus-centric life. And so a Jesus-centric life looks like this. Number one, it's others-focused. You know, thinking about others, about what others need, how others might need to be led, that's a Jesus-centric life. Service-motivated. That, that, that we come together as, as believers in service to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Like I told the kids today, you know, there are things that, that we maybe can't do with our hands, but when we join in service with each other, it's amazing the things that, 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 that we can get done. And then the third one is 
a satisfaction-rich life. A satisfaction-rich life. Now, Paul opens the door for this whole thing of satisfaction-rich life. So, so I think that, 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 that I have three challenging questions when it comes to using our hands and being in service that, that I want to address. And I want to use the book of Galatians today to kind of help us through it. The first question I have for you is this, and, and, and maybe people ask this. You know, I mean, maybe you've asked this. Why would anyone want to go through all the trouble of being a servant? Think about it. You know, it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take us some things to, just to be a servant, to humble ourselves. To be, why, why would anybody want to do that? Well, Paul gives the church in Galatia in chapter 5, he, he, he says to the church, he says, this is what we're supposed to be about. Now listen to the scripture. It says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. And, and for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out. You will be destroyed by one another. Ouch. But, but what jumps out at me is this. is you know, why, why would I want to go through all the trouble of being a servant for Jesus? Well, Paul says this. Number one, he said, we're called to be free. And he said, when you put yourself in Christ's service, you are free. And listen to what it says. It says, you know, let, don't be self-indulgent, but look at the things that you are freed up to do. Free, freed up to, to be giving, to be loving, you know, freed up to be helping to, to someone who's investing in others. And, and, and he says, when you do that, this freedom, you're going to get joy from it. Because Paul like, like, was talking to that church, like the church today, when we think about freedom, we think about not being bound up by things. But Paul's saying just the opposite. He's saying when, when you're truly free is when you're committed to using the work and doing the work of your hands for Christ Jesus. And he goes, and he said, we're called to be free. And he goes, and that is an amazing thing. So he says, use this freedom. You know, how many times do we think if I do this, it's, it's going to bind me up? And, and, and spiritually, what it does, it actually, it actually frees us. Now, Life is incredible, Paul says, when we don't let sins weigh us down, but, but we use our hands to do good things. So in the book of Galatians, Paul goes in and he talks about all the sins. He lists them all. Drunkenness, debauchery, sexual immorality, uh, you know, all of the... He, and, and so he outlines those. For, but, but, you know, I, I want to bring that back down for us because I, I think fairly, we're, we're fairly good people. But we have three things that, that, that we struggle with that, that kind of keep us from being that servant with our hands, and, and they're this. They're not all those big things. I think the big three ones for us are this. Comfort is one of them. Mm -hmm. Remember I said others focus. If, if I do this, is it going to make me feel uncomfortable? Second one is convenience. If you're going to do the work of Jesus Christ... Yeah, your schedule is going to be interrupted. You're going to have to, to, to make priorities different. And, and so, so the comfort and convenience. And then there's the third one. Anybody want to give her what that is? Comfort, convenience, and cost. How many times have we said, what's it going to cost me? So I think that, that, that those are the three things that, that we wrestle with as human beings about totally being a servant and giving Jesus the work of our, our, our hands. So that's the first question. The second question I think we have to answer is, who exactly are we supposed to love and to serve? And the scriptures are real plain about that. Who are we supposed to love and serve? And, and Galatians says, you are to love your... Neighbor. And, you know, what did the Pharisee say? Who is my neighbor? Well, I'm going to tell you this. The way I describe a neighbor, a, a neighbor is someone who's not you. Did you ever think about that? Yeah. And Paul says, once again, 
This is going to be challenging, but if you do this, you will be inspired by the Holy Spirit. And when you keep in step with that, you're going to know a satisfaction ever known. And then the last one is, how are we supposed to love? How are we supposed to love? And we're supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves. And here's the real challenge with that. We can love our neighbors. We can love on our neighbors. But do we love our neighbors like we love ourselves? Do we love our neighbors as we love ourselves? When I'm out shopping, and it's Christmas, and we're having a Coats for Kids drive or something like that, and, 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 uh, and I'm wearing an Eddie Bauer coat, and I'm buying a coat, and I say, well, you know what, I can just get this little knockoff brand here that's on sale of reason. I know that's a monetary thing, but think about that. We, 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 we love our neighbors, but do we love our neighbors as ourselves? Do, do we put the same type of energy into loving our neighbors that we do for ourselves or, or maybe what we say, our people, our people? So let's go back to that story. The people who lowered the man to Jesus, they pushed against society. And, and, and so... I want you to take this visual with you today, that the visual of these hands, but also the visual. We've got a great opening in our roof here, if you look up there. And, and I, want, I want you to imagine somebody coming through that roof, and I want you to imagine this building filled with people coming to hear the Word of God, to experience His touch. Imagine this church is full. It's beyond what the fire marshal would have. Is, is there a fire marshal here? <laughs> if so, J Jesus takes precedence. But true. And, and so this, is, this capacity to bring people in and let people in. You see, because with Jesus, there's no capacity. There's always room for one more. And, and, and so as we work with our hands, the merits of our hands... I think that we need to, to cling that, that God's going to give us all things. Even those things that maybe we think we're going to miss out of because of comfort, cost, and convenience. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 32. It says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? If God gave us His Son, Jesus Christ, and died on the cross for our sins, that's the ultimate. How, is he, how would He not give us all things? And so, so our motivation then to Jesus to reset our hands is to be to fulfill the promises that God gives us in that statement. You know, when I owned my business... It was very, you, know, you have your mission statement, you have your goals, but as a business owner, you're always looking at the ROI. Anybody remember ROI, return on? Yeah. And one of the things that, that I realized very, very quickly is the church kind of is like a business, but the ROI is out of this world. And sometimes the ROI comes forth in ways that we just never see coming. Blessings that, 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 that Jesus brings in all things. And so today, with, with Reset Hands, we are freed up to give. We are freed up to serve. We are freed up to invest. We are freed to show up to love and to care. And, and I hope you have that passion put on your heart. There are things of this world right now that need our hands, our hearts, and our voices. We have to check ourselves to make sure we're not sitting back, just watching, commenting, but that we're actively, actively involved there. You know, friends, God's not done with us, is He? He's not done with you. 
You know, I thought that when I, when I turned the big 5-0, I thought I was going to have that, 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 that right to say, I did my time, right? I did that. I can now step back. I can rest. I can relax, you know? About a year ago, I was telling, uh, telling some folks, this week, they are asking me about my life and stuff like that. I said, yeah, a year ago, I just remember going, you know what? Great church up in, in Ohio, Normandy. It finally got it to where it's going. It's booming. I said to myself, I can sit back for six more years and just coast and just enjoy this. Comfort, convenience, cost. And what does God do? He says, uh-uh, I'm not done with you. And every time I kept saying, well, I don't know. Or every time I, you know, I would feel God just continuing, you, you've got, and you know my story. And when this pastor position came up here at Christ Venice, it was just like, I did this initially. I'm in Dayton, freezing cold in Dayton doing this. And God's saying, no, 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 no. It's not that. You, you crossed that 5-0. But we're not, I'm not done with you. And so he said, we need to do this. So as you go forth today, go out with hands that look like this. And know that your unique gifts, whatever they are, God has a plan for until our last breath. And because we do that, when you live like that, you're free. And God's going to give you goodness in all things. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? God, we just praise and thank you for this time of reset. And I pray, Lord, that, that, that maybe now we will start to hear, or I start to receive emails of how you have reset our lives. And we share that with one another. How you've come in maybe this last month and just stirred in us and worked in us. And God, I pray now as we go forth, as we have your sacrament of communion that we would be nourished by your Holy Spirit and then sent forth with open arms. Jesus, we leave this to you in your greater glory. Amen. On the evening in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and after having given thanks and blessing it, he turned to his disciples and he said, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. Each time you do this, do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, following the meal, he took the cup. And after having blessed it, he turned to his disciples and said, Take and drink of this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Each time you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. in the room Come see the scars of love upon his hands The king is in the room 
We'll watch the darkness flee at his command. Who is this king? Who is this king? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Light of the world. There's freedom in his Awesome in power, reigning forever, light of the world, there's freedom in his name. The healers in the room, let miracles break out across this place. Saviors in the room, no soul beyond the boundaries of His grace. There's resurrection power in His name. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, light of the world. There's freedom in his name, awesome in power, reigning forever, light of the world. There's freedom in his name. There's freedom in his name. never been a love so great he died so we could live then he rose up from that grave name another king like this now all authority forever belongs to him he reigns in victory name another king like this there's never been a love so great. He died so we could live. Then he rose up from that grave. Name another king like this. Now all authority forever belongs to him. He reigns in victory. Name another king like this. Name another king like this. Who is this king? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Light of the world. There's freedom in his name. Awesome in power. Reigning There's freedom in his name. There's freedom in his name. There's never been a love so great. He died so we could live. Then he rose up from that grave. Name another king like this. Now all authority forever belongs to him. He reigns in victory. Name another king like this. Name another king like this. Who is this king? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Light of the world, there's freedom in his name, awesome in power, reigning forever. Light of the world, there's freedom in his name, 
There's freedom in his name. The king is in the room. The king is in the room. Would you stand and sing response with us? Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Would you join me as we pray our benediction as we go forth with reset hearts, minds, and voices. We lift up our hands and ask that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace until we meet again. Go forth now in the strong name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people shall say the word. 